Romans chapter 1, starting at verse 8. First, Paul said, I thank my God through Jesus Christ for all of you, because your faith is being reported all over the world. God, whom I serve with my whole heart in preaching the gospel of his Son, is my witness. How constantly I remember you in my prayers at all times. And I pray that now, at last by God's will, the way may be open for me to come to you. I long to see you, so that I may impart to you some spiritual gift to make you strong. That is, that you and I may be mutually encouraged by each other's faith. I do not want you to be unaware, brothers, that I planned many times to come to you, but have been prevented from doing so until now, in order that I might have a harvest among you, just as I've had among other Gentiles. Paul felt that was his calling, especially to take the gospel to the Gentiles. He goes on to say, I'm obligated both to the Greeks and the non-Greeks, both to the wise and foolish. That is why I am so eager to preach the gospel also to you who are at Rome. Now, if you've got it, would you help me with the last couple of verses? He finishes with this. I am not ashamed of the gospel because it's the power of God for the salvation of everyone who believes, first for the Jew and then for the Gentile. For in the gospel, a righteousness from God is revealed, a righteousness that is by faith from first to last, just as it is written, the righteous will live by faith. And that I think you'll agree there are a lot of important things in life. Uh, probably a lot of the things on my list would be on your list. Health, education, uh, finances, financial peace, that's important. Freedom, church, good works, loving kindness. And of course, I think a lot of you would have at the top of your list of values, like I do, uh, family. But none of those values, not even family, is as important as right standing with God. Being right with God is for all of your life and then for all of eternity. So if, if, if you are looking for right standing with God in, in the gospel, you've hit the jackpot. Or maybe the gospel is about, let's go on through the little paragraph there. It's about right standing with God that is available for all of us, available for everyone. The scriptures say it's for the Jews and the Gentiles. It's for the cultured and the uncultured. I'll let you decide where you fit on that scale. <laughs> it's for the educated, the uneducated. The gospel isn't just for people of one religion or people of, uh, it's for people of all religious backgrounds. It's for people of no religious backgrounds. It's for people of all ages and all skin colors, and all nations. The gospel is that there is right standing with God available to absolutely everyone. I think that's good news. But it goes on to, to say that Paul's description does. It's right standing with God available for all of us because of what Jesus has done for us. This right standing, the gospel tells us, must be received by faith in Jesus. Right standing with God can only be experienced by faith in Jesus. You ever had anybody tell you, you need to get right with God? Well, if they do, tell them you can't, because you can't get right with God. Uh, you can't achieve right standing with God by good morals, church participation, being a good family person, doing good works, or a combination thereof. We can't earn right standing with God. We must be made right with God. And God is ready and willing and able to do this for us, but he has one condition, and that one condition is we must put our faith in Jesus Christ the Lord. If we want to finish out the paragraph, let's finish it out by noting this is faith that is living and lasting. Faith isn't a been there, done that thing. 
It's not something you, you check off your list. Well, I went up to the front, or I, I prayed the prayer, or I got baptized, or I, or I got into church. Real faith is living, and it's lasting. But a good question is, what are we, what are we supposed to do with this gospel of Jesus Christ that has been entrusted to us? Let me say, first of all, encourage you in this way, we, we should never be ashamed of the gospel, always proud and thankful for this simple gospel. The gospel of Jesus Christ is the power of God to salvation for everyone who believes, and we should never be ashamed of the gospel of Jesus Christ. What do we do with the gospel? Well, we make sure we stay on message, stay on point stay on message. It's, it's easy to get off. Uh, there's so many good messages that we might try to get out there. I started to make a list, and the list was a page long, and you didn't want to hear that, so I, I threw it away. But you know as well as I do, there's so many messages about various facets of life that are good and helpful and need to be shared. But we must be careful, disciples of Christ, when we're scattered and when we're gathered, that above all else, we share the gospel message. That is the message for which we are first and foremost responsible. Someone can't grow in the Lord. They can't share the Lord until they know the Lord. And then finally, it's important that we keep on sharing this gospel until Jesus comes again or takes us home.